wrestling match with this one example that was online, but I think I finally came through and got it to work just in time uh, for today's class. So one of the things that was asked about was services. And so I found an example on serv about services and um, we'll take a look at the one example. There's a couple examples. The second one is a I also got it working, that was a little easier, but it wasn't quite as impressive. The first one, I think, is a little bit better example. So we'll, we'll look at that one. Um, and um, in this um, adventure, um, I also discovered what was discussed sort of after class one day about the way permissions are handled or different than they uh, were in previous, you know, earlier versions of Android. So I had to address that because I think this was written a while ago. So anyhow, what I'd like to do is I'd like to show you how this application works. And then we will discuss it because it uses a service. I guess the best thing to do would be to start off and, and look to define what a service is probably better than just jumping right in and uh, looking at the example, because I'll give you some context. So this is a page that I used. I posted it and a couple other pages uh, to Canvas along with my mutated version of his example. service as a component that runs in the background without direct interaction from the user. So um, I've heard in other languages them called things like background processes and so on. For example, you might have an email application that is constantly looking to see if you've received an email and if you've received anything it might uh, it might alert you that, hey, you've gotten an email and update your inbox within the application. So that would be an example, I think, of a service because it runs without any interaction. In other words, you, have to, you don't have to click to say, go ahead and look for mail. All right? It just sort of runs in the background. Uh, th those of you who have an Android uh, device, you know, uh, will see that. Any sort of messages that you receive, receive text or whatever, a lot of applications have those that run uh, in the background. One thing I have, uh, one good example that I can think of is also Spotify, where if you are a premium Spotify member, and this is not an ad advertisement for Spotify or anything, but if you're a premium Spotify member, you can download uh, stuff to your um, to your local device, which um, I, I was taking a trip. and. I didn't, my phone would be in airplane mode, and so I didn't. I wasn't able to be connected to the internet for part of the trip. And well, you know, I was able to download stuff, and therefore I could listen to it without being attached online to the internet. So when you do that, you just say what music you want to download, and it sort of happens in the background. All right, nothing that you need to interact. You initiate the download, and then it just sort of runs in the background, and. I don't recall if I got a notification when it was done, but sure enough, it downloaded and it was all done and, and I, was, I was good to go. So they describe a service component which runs in the background without direct interaction with the user. As it has no user interface, it's not bound to the life cycle of an activity. So for example, I have my email here, you know, there's an activity. I open up my email. All right. I go and close it. And again, it follows the lifestyle of an activity like we talked about last time, where it goes into 
uh, either a stopped or whatever mode, and then when I bring it back up, it restarts and so on. But the service that's running in the background is running sort of not attached to that, all right? It doesn't require um, anything. So they run with a higher priority than inactive or invisible activities, and therefore is less likely that Android will terminate them. Uh, services can be also configured to be restarted, and so on. Uh, here's some information about threading. All right. Um, and it talks about services which run in the process of the application are sometimes called local services. There's some syntax about doing that, and what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to look at the example, because um, there's more information about that, and talks about a service communicating uh, to the broadcast receiver of the activity. That's how a service can notify through the Android system, and we'll see that in our example. So, I did this example. The example is to download stuff, download a file from somewhere. And uh, because that could be, depending on what you're downloading, it could be a time intensive process, it runs as a service. So, here we have it, and I'm going to run it. I decided to download. You could download anything, but I went and I'm going to download a nice little Android guy. So I'm downloading this file to my local drive. All right, this is a PNG file. OK, so let me run it. One thing that I found through this is there's a neat little <coughs> window that you can have. You can open it by going to View, Tool Windows, and Device File Explorer. And that will allow you to see the files, the data files that are on the device. In a case like this, I wasn't sure if I downloaded it or not, right? Uh, even if it told me it succeeded, I wasn't going to be sure that I downloaded it until I actually saw the file there. All right? And so I can go and actually look. This is going to get put in the external storage, which is emulated, and it will essentially get put in this folder, the zero folder. Is that download directory? Is that, that must be already created? Yes. So is that? Uh, it's under emulated, but would there be one under the phone too? Yes. Yes, there would be. Emulated, uh, they talked about this, and I didn't study it in too much detail, but actually this emulated is kind of emulating an SD card. Okay. Uh, and, and that maps to what normally would be like an SD card. Although I don't think... Does it download over there too, I guess? Yeah. I, I think normally the, the, that sort of maps to the SD card. That um, It's like a virtual directory. All right. So, if you notice, that Andy JPEG is nowhere in here, all right? So, nothing up my sleeves, the whole bit. So, if I go and run this, we'll run this, we'll see how it behaves, and then we'll talk about a couple aspects of it. Um, the one aspect is the whole service bit of it. The other aspect will be the permissions bit of it. So, let me run it, and I'm going to pick a device I don't think I've run this on before, just in case... There's permission implications for that. So I'm going to go and start this up. Compile with zero errors. There's the application. And there's a button that says download. Now, normally, you know, this is pretty straightforward. Normally, you might have, you know, if you wanted to download, give the user choices of things off your server to download or something like that. But here we're just downloading a hard-coded file name. 
So notice the status of the service is not started. All right. I click the button. It's going to go and fire off the service. The background service is going to download it in the background and it's going to broadcast to the main activity saying when it's complete. So I click download. First it asks me permission. Uh, do you want to allow my application to access photos, media, and files on your device? And I will say yes. So actually you don't really get the effect given that it's not that big of a file and whatever, but it went and downloaded it. The status actually changed, I think, a couple of times, but finally the download is complete. And if we look in our JPEG file. Try that again. Download it. Download. Storage emulated zero. The rest was just telling me that it got stored to a path. Oh, you know what? This is 10. This, is, this has happened before. I have, I have another emulator running, yeah. and it does not show on, does not show on either screen. All right. I, in the Mac, when I go to, I can go down here, and I don't see it on my screen. If I click Show All Windows, it shows it to me. So there's a little workaround that I found, I have to go and go to settings, change the display size. Yeah. Abracadabra, here it is. <laughs> and then I change it back. 
let me tell you, that was driving me crazy for a while. So I figured that. And I can go and close out of this. All right. So if I go to Android Studio, that should be the proper emulator that it's showing me. And I click download. It's asking me permission. Again, I say allow. Download done. And if we look, this is driving me crazy. Is that a, is that a Nexus 10 that you got out there? I believe so, yeah. so long on this, I would just say, trust me, it's there. <laughs> but this was a struggle. I am not seeing it. Okay, I don't have an answer, but I actually have seen it download. Yeah, it shows a path real quick in a toast message. Storage emulate zero. Andy something at PNG. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to close out of this and restart it. I had another thing I had problems with today wrestling with this was um, to do, what was it? Oh, getting the logs to show. And, and we'll talk about that because I was logging these uh, messages while I was debugging it and I couldn't see what was wrong. And the logs were not showing. The log messages were not showing. I don't know. I went and logged to a different level of detail. I tried a couple of them. I tried verbose. I tried debug. And nothing seemed to work. I finally used the WTF log setting, which I thought someone suggested it on one of the forums. And I, yeah, it, it's like, yeah, it said, someone said it was like, you know, this is really fouled up or something like that. But anyhow, um, I, uh, I ran that, uh, and then my log messages showed, and I was able to see exactly what was wrong. Yes. Sometimes it stays on the old device. Right. And so you're wondering where my log message is. Right. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah, exactly. Right device. Exactly. And here we go. Here is, there's Andy. So it did download it. So I feel vindicated. All right. So let's look at the code. There's actually a couple of classes here. And we also did some things in the manifest file. And apparently you have to put to find that there's permissions in the manifest file and then you ask for them. So I was a little confused by that. I thought, well, if you're asking for them, why do you put them? But apparently you do need to do that. So for, the manifest file contains things like, we haven't spent a lot of time looking at this, but it contains uh, information uh, about the application and about other intents that could be running. Um, and uh, permissions and services that could be used. So 
this says, you know, this is such and such version of the app, uh, version name, minimum SDK version, target SDK version. Uh, it uses permission, the internet, so it goes out, runs out, and grabs the internet, and it writes to external storage. And this is my application, blah, 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 blah. These are the main, act this is the main activity. All right. Um, and here we define a service which is contained uh, in download service. I do want to say that when I was troubleshooting this, I was trying a lot of stuff. I actually created an application twice and copied code in, and it was it was sort of a mess. I'm not claiming this is my code, all right? I put a readme file when I zipped it up saying that this isn't my code, uh, but even though the package does have my name on it. So just to, to clarify that, uh, yeah, this isn't my code. This is something I, I used from there. Just add that into the into the manifest. All right, our main activity. Well, you actually created a broadcast receiver. Yeah, created a broadcast receiver, internal, sort of an anonymous class, on receive that will go and will process any oh, so you're subscribing to the service there? Yes. So, on create, I do all that stuff. Um, I set the on click listener, which I probably didn't need to do. Um, they actually set the on click listener in the XML file. But when I was troubleshooting this I, and not getting my log messages to appear, I thought, well, maybe that is goofy or something. So I went and did that anyhow. And, and this really is how superstitions, I think, <laughs> develop. Because when you're not sure, you just try stuff, you know. And, you know, if something works, it's like, oh, I typed that one in with my left hand. That must be the, what, what fixed it. But I could probably get rid of that. So, when I click the button, all right, um, register... Service. Let's see where we're going to click the button. On click, and I change this code around a little bit. On click, I ask permission if they have it, and this is the syntax for that. I am requesting permission for this particular permission, and notice that that's expecting uh, expecting an array, so I could have multiple permissions if I if I wanted to but I just had the one permission. So, that's going to pop up a dialog, the dialog that you saw, and then when I make my choice, either I get back a one or I don't get back a one. All right? Getting back a one indicates, yep, the user gave permission, in which case I can go ahead and do what I wanted to do. Um, otherwise, permission's denied, and therefore, you can't do what you had wanted to do. There's something that I'd like to point out here, because I, I worked a lot with this on my last project. Mm -hmm. If you go down to your where you request information, mm -hmm. um, you pass it that request code. Mm -hmm. That's what's being mapped to that case statement. OK. And so in my project, I have multiple permissions. Gotcha. So what happens is the case statement is checking which permission am I getting. Okay. That's what that's. Okay. So I was mistaken. The, the answer of one is not that. It's just saying that, look, this is the permission that you was granted. It's yeah. In other words, the permission I asked for down here. Right. Not the, that they responded yes. Okay. I understand that it only has to be a positive number. There's no restriction. Okay. They have to be unique. Right. So I could have, like, for example, several buttons. Each one requires a different permission. Because my, my code requires, like, you know, three or four. Okay. And they're just, depending on which one you click, then it goes to the Okay, it goes to that section. It does whatever it's okay. supposed to do. All right. Good, uh, good correction there. Um, it was my mistake. I, I kind of said, kind of implied that that was that. But this is actually looking to see if permission was granted, not, not this case. All right. And if it's okay, I'm
I'm creating a new intent and I am putting extra. We've dealt with this before, putting extra as a way on an intent to, um, to pass it, yeah, pass it something. And in this case, I'm passing what um, file name I want to save it as and where I'm downloading it from. Then I start the intent and I change the text box saying intent started. Okay, so the download, download service, it extends intent service. It has some of these constants here. On handle intent, this gets called when um, it gets started as an intent that way. Uh, this is where I was logging stuff uh, to make sure. And if you look, again, this is pretty useful. And interestingly enough, oh, I restarted it, so the log is cleared. Let's let's rerun it again, so you can see my message. The log is uh, kind of nifty, and you can log. There's several functions related to the log. There's like a log D for debug, log V for verbose, and it's almost like levels of things. Uh, and when I go and, where did the emulator go? Did I run the emulator? Yeah, I got lost too. like it's behind everything. Yeah, this is kind of a pain, yeah. but at least it's something I know how to do and not like the first time I did it. Okay. So I go and click this. And again, that shows a lot of different messages, but I can filter with that tag. So I can define like certain tags for certain events that I was having. I wasn't feeling very creative, so any error message or any message I logged, I logged just with the tag of ABC. So I can look and say, all right, it started that handle intent and it found the file and deleted it. So that's how I trace what happened. Right. It, it is. And again, uh, I didn't at first understand sort of the uh, filtering of the log. So like I was just sifting through all these things and it's like, oh, okay, you can filter. Uh, this is where I actually caught the error because I finally found out that it got an exception error. I looked and I saw that there was a permission error. And it's like, okay. You don't have permission to that. Did a little Googling. Oh, permissions have changed since. Uh, okay, I tripped up on that in my project. Yeah. That was a, that was a tough one. Yeah. Uh, the details of the code doesn't matter quite as much. Um, we're opening an input stream and an output stream. Uh, we grab the URL and we open the connection and we get the input stream and we read in that. We loop through the read file as long as we're not at a negative one, so as long as there's more data to read, we're reading data from the input file, which is the JPEG file, or PNG file, I'm sorry, uh, off the web. And I create uh, an output file, uh, get path. I could have like put it in pictures by putting, uh, by passing in the file name that I wanted pictures slash so whatever. You didn't, uh, specify, so is it it did specify, so it, it defaulted to um, essentially the the um, what's called is external storage or um, um, SD card. So yeah, so it it defaulted to that. to this folder. It goes to the right of the 
storage emulated zero. That apparently, my guess would be that's emulating like the one SD card one. Yeah. So yeah, zero. And it, it actually tells you that when you download it, that it, it went and did that. So, and I could have, when I called the service, specified like picture slash, right. and, and then it would put it in there. And I assume the, there must be a very defined file structure like that. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's, it's pretty pretty consistent. I I know even just from playing around for my Amazon device, which uh, Amazon device, Android device, uh, which is why I, I think I am team Android, not team iPhone. Um, without jailbreaking or anything, you can just pop your device onto a computer and it's a giant USB drive and you can just copy files to it from it whatever and you don't have to like ask iTunes for a file or <laughs> ask it please put this file on give it a credit card give it a credit yeah give it a credit card <laughs> I never remember my iTunes uh, password either because it's like it must contain you know a a a character in you know in the Norse alphabet and you know all those things so I never get that right all right, so essentially, yeah, it, it reads and outputs it. The interesting thing is when it is done, because when it's done, if it successfully finishes, it sets the result to OK. Then it publishes the results. All right, calls the publish result function, gives it the path, gives it the result, and it creates a notification intent puts the file path and puts the result and broadcast back to whoever called it and tells it. At this point, then, this guy oops, is listening for messages. And as it receives a message, it gets the data from it. And it looks to see what the data is. And it looks to see if the result was OK. Or not okay and if it's okay it makes a toast to just display I think the file path and if not it um, tells you that it failed just to be complete I'm gonna go and I'm gonna say picture slash file name do I want to attempt fate sure Yeah, I, I, I liked it, but you know, here's the funny thing, because this example was like doomed, and, and if you would have talked to me, let's see, an hour and 40 minutes ago, I would have hated that guy that wrote this example, and you know. What did you hate the most about it? What I hate the most about it? I'll tell you what I hate the most about it. He says the source code is available here. I go to uh, like a Git, you know, I go to his Git site, download it, find it, it doesn't, the source code in the Git doesn't match the source code in the example. Oh, really? That's what, it was like close, but like there was some extra things in there maybe he was playing around with or whatever. Yeah. And, and that's what I hated the most because that took me a long time to figure out like, yeah, what's going on here, you know? And so I ended up just going to his example and copying and pasting uh, from the site uh, into into the files and all that. So so let's let's try this. Saved, you could go and call another intent and pass it to it and pop up the image. Right. right. 
or even maybe have an image view on here and pull it down and show it or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, and that would work too. That's a nice, yeah. complete example. Yeah. Um, let me show you what I posted. Because there's a couple things to review. I posted uh, my version of that code. Um, this is the website that has the example. Yeah. Um, there is another example here. Let me see if I. This is, is neither. This, this one is services. This example is, uh, shoot, click one too many back arrows. This one is called services. Uh, we'll talk about the permission ones in, in a second. Let me open the other one, I think. I think I still have it because I was playing with it. That's not it. I think this one. Open this window. This one is not particularly, I didn't think it was as fun. That's why I was struggling to get the other one going. Because I this was like plan B. This one, <laughs> this one a bit of my lecture if I didn't didn't figure out the first one. Okay, this has a thing where you can trigger a service and the service is just going to randomly generate one of like four strings yeah. and then update the list. So trigger service, update the list. So not terribly exciting. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, why? I could see why you'd write a, a service to download, but I can't see why you'd write a service to do this. But again, same idea. This has this is a list activity has an adapter. Um, this uses a binding of the service uh, for it, and connect the service, and the service just essentially um, starts up. Not sticky means that it can die, I think. A sticky service means that it tries to stay running, and it just randomly generates a word and adds to a list, and this guy asks for the list. So I didn't think that was too exciting. But both of these examples are found on the service link. The, the two other ones that are here, one talks about the change in permissions. All right. Um, and it talks about the whole idea of permissions and what changed. And I, I think it is at, yeah, at API level 23, uh, there's a change done to the way permissions were, were uh, handled. And it talks about having to be in a manifest. And if your app needs a dangerous permission. Right. Now, I, don't, I, I wonder if there's a list of dangerous permissions. <laughs> Go ahead. So we know the internet is not one of them. Okay. okay. But the ones where you're uh, writing to, to the file system, like where you did right. this one, um, also accessing location from GPS. Okay. That's a dangerous permission. Right. And then I believe um, I have to look at my app. Okay. Here is here's here's a a list of some of them. Yeah. Access. Yeah, Network state, Bluetooth, Bluetooth admin. Basically, things that are going to get personal information. You know, if you think about location, uh, right. contacts, uh, right. stuff like that. Answer phone calls. <laughs> yeah. Phone calls. yeah. You, you, you can get your phone number, anything personally identifiable. Facebook did, maybe. Right. So, right. There, there, what they did was at 23, huh. they require runtime. Even if you put it in the manifest, you still have to get. Right. It used to be before that it was sufficient to do it in installation only. Right. But now you have to get the runtime. But it does it does cache it after you do it once. So after you do it once, so uh, in other words, the second time I do it, it right. doesn't ask me again. No. All right. So even if I brought up that application again, if I ran the same emulator, right. it would 
But it's, it's, a, it's an actual runtime thing versus a right. installation thing. Right, exactly. I'm kind of glad they did that, actually. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, and that makes perfect sense. But from a developer standpoint, I was, you know, I was like, a lot of people were complaining about that. Because I was like, right. I didn't do this, and there's a lot of complaints. Right. This at least a harder to develop. Yeah. I am curious. I'm going to go and just verify what you said in this case. I'm going to go and run this again and see. It probably won't ask me for permissions. It shouldn't. Yeah. Now, if you uninstall it, reinstall it. Yeah, right. Right, right. So download. Yep, download it. It didn't ask me again because it asked me. So, yeah, so that's that's a change. And here's a list of the, quote, dangerous ones. And like you said, it's pretty logical what they are. Change the wallpaper, probably not that big of a deal. Access your contact yeah, list. Contact and contact read it right up. Yeah. For, yeah, your, your location, both your fine location and your course location, so uh, both of those. Uh, any body sensors that you have, you know, permission to access those, which, yeah, it's kind of like, good job, Andrew. <laughs> and I, I, I do wonder what, what the issue was, that people sort of blew through it at an installation and, and gave, gave away too many permissions. I think that's kind of true. So many things to solve these right. things. Right. But they wanted it more explicit. Right. And again, that's probably a good thing. The other link I had just was a, a Stack Overflow post that um, talked about um, oh, how to actually change the permissions. This is the example I used in figuring mine out. So that, this is what I had for today. Um, Thursday is a work slash show and tell day. So if you want, um, if you can email me or, or send me in some form or another your code like as of like sometime before class, I'll be on the lookout for it so I can install it so we can don't spend a lot of time, um, um, you know, Installing it, but playing around with that. I was going to say on my code, um, I'll go over it with the emulator, but because of the nature of my code, the emulator doesn't do a lot. Oh, right, because you need so to use accelerometer. And what I'll do is I'll pass my phone around. If okay. If you want to try it. All right. Well, cool. I mean, it's a small group of people yeah. here, so, you know. That, that you won't change. get a lot off the emulator. Right. Okay. All right. Sounds sounds good. And But, yeah, you can, you can show the code. I will, uh, I'll just, I'll just submit it, and then I okay. don't think I have any changes, but okay. I can resubmit it if I do. Right. All right, sounds good. And you wanted to be in the lab as opposed to here, or did you want to be here? Let's be here. Okay. I thought your announcement said the lab. It probably did. Okay. Here or the lab. I'll, I'll they're look good. They're not far apart. Yeah, they're not far apart. Uh, but, yeah, uh, in fact, I will, I will correct that announcement, just I know a couple people, some are not always here, so. I'll submit my code for you know, maybe even tonight, but I do I do want to emphasize that when you run it mm -hmm. and the emulator is not going to do okay. a lot of stuff. Well, I'll I'll, I'll grab it. And I'll put it on my phone. And, and then, then you have, then you have to do the permission. You have to do permissions either way. Right, right, right. right. The emulator is like, well, you know, it right. doesn't really give you the kind of stuff. Like this, this information is all static. <coughs> right. The sensor information is static. Right. And, I did see, I mean, there's things that you can do, like, for location. You can, you can, on the emulator, you can, like, put in a location. You can, oh, yeah, yeah. you can use it. It's yeah. just, it's not nearly as, uh, it's not nearly as interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I know, we, uh, we did some things with, uh, in the mobile web class, we did some things with the um, Google Maps API. And it's, it's so cool to have it on a device and to be walking around and literally see your little guy walking around, and you can almost see like exactly where you're supposed to be, oh, really? you know, in in LC's lab, you know, it'll show you that you're on this end of the business division as opposed to that end, you know. So. I read that cool. Google Maps is going to charge a fair amount of money. Well, Google Maps, uh, you have to read. In fact, 
some of my students in that class were like, whoa, wait a minute, because you have to put a credit card in right. when you get it now. And it, it, they start to charge at a certain level of usage. It's so, a fair amount, but still, if you were going right. to write an application that you want to sell, right. it would be right. interesting. In the web dev class for the final project, I put a, a, a sign up for a developer key, I think it's right. whatever it's called, and put a, a map in one of the pages. And it was cheap, it was free then, so you're saying it's changing here. Right. Oh, yeah, recently, like this oh. year. Oh, you had uh, you had that class before. Yeah. Yeah, right. That yeah, that changed over the summer because yeah. my students brought it to my attention. Not the mobile web, just the regular web development. Gotcha. I was messing around on one of the pages. Gotcha. Like, How's that oh, okay. I see. Yeah. It's one yeah. of the things I did, and this was implement you know GPS and compass. I'm like, well, I'd like to put that on a map. So I look, what would that cost? And like, well, they actually charge money for that. Company. Yeah. Right. right. <laughs> Well, yeah, I, I think the, the starting thing was just for students seeing they had to put in a credit card number to do an assignment. It's like, whoa, <laughs> you know, yeah, danger. There are some free ones out there still, though. I, I kind of want to look into that because what I want it for doesn't require necessarily Google Maps. Right. So you guys were actually able to look with the API to see yourself. Yeah, within. Yeah, within a pretty good degree of accuracy.